Let's get to it. Hey, guys, thank you so much for jumping into the podcast. Um, I am very, very lucky to be looking at you guys for all different reasons, and we're going to get into that in this podcast. Um, I'm ready to roll. I got my carrot juice ready to roll. Um, got a little <laughs> throat bag. And hey, you know what? Before we jump into this, I'm not sure if you guys know anything about my podcast. I don't know if Annie gave you some homework or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we start off every podcast with what I like to call the over the top intro because whenever I have special guests like you guys, I gotta go hard, man. I gotta go hard for my folk. Is that okay? Yeah, totally. yeah. It Let's us. go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have not one, not two, but three great guests today. My first guest is Rome's Italy's greatest export, and this award-winning actor can be seen in First Love, Cuddly Toys, and the new project, The Mental State, not to be outdone in the screen right next to him, is all the way from Vancouver, Canada, this certified veteran of the silver screen. Her credits include The Collector, it's Tomorrow People, The 24 of Redemption, and one of my guilty favorites, Snow Day. You play fun. Lastly, our accomplished filmmaker, in the screen to your top. Born and raised out of New Jersey, it all started with a hijacking from a friend's video camera, and then all this good stuff start happening. Shout out to Bergen County Camera, not too far from Route 9. <laughs> all the way in Jersey. You know what I'm talking about. Since then, he has directed and produced several award-winning short feature films, his most recently finished feature, and what we're here to talk about today, The Mental State. Jace Enslin, Carly Pope, Dave Kamali, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> what up, Sam? Thank you. Dynamite. Thanks for having us. Wow. Great. Love it. Intro. Hope I didn't go too deep. You know, I, I know the nah, camera stop right off Route 9, Jersey represent. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Thank you. I love it. But let's get into it, because I wanted to start off that, not only with the over-the-top intro, uh, give a little levity on something that we got to talk, we got to get deep, we got to get all heavy, because we're talking about this uh, film. And quite honestly, it's been a long-time passion project in you, James, because this is one of the things that come out of New Jersey that's more sobering than the 2023 Jets season. So let's just <laughs> get into Am I lying? Am I lying? I'm not a Jets fan, so yeah, I, I'm uh, you know, I, yeah. strangely we're Cowboys fans in our home, but yeah, the Jets they got to figure their whole franchise out, man. I don't know what's going on over there, but yeah. But look, the in all seriousness, this movie was deep. It was great. Um, how did the origin of the story come about? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think it's always tough to talk about like the origin of of the story idea without talking about too deeply where the story goes, but, you know, we have, and, and I feel comfortable talking about it. And, and uh, I grew up, you know, in a post Columbine uh, world in school. Right. And so like our school, strangely in third, fifth grade in high school, we had lockdown drills. We had rehearsing of exit strategies. And, you know, there's sometimes this debate when we would do that, then a vague paranoia of like, is was somebody, somebody cued in, what, you know, what's going on. And, um, then as I was coming of age into a young adult, Sandy Hook happened, and that was something that really resonated with me and obviously with, with the country a lot. And um, at the time, I was starting to talk about a vague story idea like this with my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, and she's a fantastic actress. She plays the counselor, Melanie Hansen, in the film. And um, she told me that her former drama teacher, Josh Adele, had written a play, The Mental State, um, that kind of incorporated and dealt with a lot of the social themes and topics, you know, teenage mental health and mental health resources that um, I wanted to cover and a lot of the family dynamics. So he and I spoke and our sort of heart and intention with the story was very much in the same place. And um, the rest is history. Josh and I are still cl close friends. We grab, uh, you know, grab lunch together every now and then. So, I mean, yeah. we're, uh, this this movie, I mean, it hit on so many different levels because not only do you just talk about mental health, which is like at the core of this, and then mm -hmm. with the backdrop of two different shootings um, without giving, I'm picking my words very carefully not to give this movie away. Yeah. And on top of that, 
um, there's a financial element. There's mm -hmm. um, why you can't afford mental health. Now, I grew up in a church. Uh, there's that mm -hmm. uh, church element of mm -hmm. how do I say it like this? Looking like we can help you, but not really. You're kind of on your own. Mm -hmm. And when you have something in this story, I, I kind of want to dovetail this over to Carly and Jance because – what about this made and spoke to you about this project and made you want to sign on to play these characters? Well, I think for me, um, the thing that was so interesting and uh, different than other types of scripts that I've read is that this film was, it had such a, uh, wide range of topics that were all being addressed simultaneously which is so important like when you if you're gonna make a, a film about this um it's never just one thing it's like it's everything so you can't forget about you know it this movie is isn't just about you know gun violence and gun control it's it's about you know, a kid who's an, who's an artist um, at heart. And it's also about like a mother who's experiencing tragedy. And it's also about like students at school who find that their classmate is dangerous or, or not, you know, um, you know, and I felt like this script was so thorough in its uh, like, exploration of of all of these themes that are intimately interconnected with each other so to me that's what really drew me in it it, it just had so much depth and uh truth in it okay yeah I, I i absolutely i absolutely concur with that and i think like you know for me i can look out my window and see echoes of this film i can open my phone and see echoes of this film you turn on the news it's right there there's just so much that's so heavily prevalent and and so prescient like so prescient in our society and 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 um it, you know history repeats itself in a lot of ways and but i also believe that we can do better and make better choices and create more comprehensive public health protocols and initiatives and and create a perspective that might destigmatize um a lot that is currently stigmatized and there's so much myth around and like for for me when what really drew me to this also uh, per Jance's point is just like there there are just so many different things going on in this film that I hope my biggest hope is that it's relatable at its core. It's fiction, nevertheless, but it's still hopefully echoing enough of real life that people will think differently or more deeply, um, that their hearts will open a little more, that there's compassion, that there's empathy, that there's, uh, there's a path forward to recognize someone's suffering. Um, and I just feel like, yeah, it's just, you know, there are, there are critical elements that, that I believe should be part of the dialogue. So it was an opportunity. It was an opportunity to like open my eyes and wake, wake myself up to the fact that there, but for the grace of God, go I, the, these, these circumstances and issues can plague anyone at any time when you least expect it. And we should all be so fortunate and lucky to have the help and resources we need when we need them. And it's, now, and it's certainly not the case right now. <laughs> yeah. And this is what I want. Um, I want to kind of single you two out for a second, James. We're going to get back to you. Don't get, don't get me wrong. We're going to get back to you. But <laughs> what I'm saying good. is um, I, I do want to single you guys out because Jance, uh, Carly, mm -hmm. you guys played the hell out of those roles. Jance, I'm still afraid of you. Just be, just be keep it 100 because um, <laughs> you played that role so well. And Carly, man, that you played his mom and you played that role and you got that point across like, um, and look, you always have done that. And I'm, I'm going to gush on you for just a second, Carly, because I don't know if you know this or not way back when, when I didn't have all these grays and I had a smooth face, this, 
I don't know, 2005, 2006. It's in Austin, Texas. I got my first shot of doing it um, kind of like the interview junket in Austin, Texas. It was for you, and you were working on a movie called The Itty Bitty Titty Committee. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, of course. And I was a flat foot person, didn't know anything from nothing. And you were so nice to me. And you, that wasn't an act. So no. when I actually see you act in oh, something like this or anything else, it came across as so genuine. And I'm getting to a question, guys. Hold on. I'm getting to a question. <laughs> Not butter on your bread. <laughs> but the reason I'm, I, I'm singling you two out is because even in my intro, I, and I don't want to get too political about this. You're from Canada. You're from Rome, Italy. Now, this problem that we're talking about. Which wait, is, where did you get that? Where? Wait, I'm I'm not from Rome. Really? No. <laughs> Check it your IMDb. Been... It, it, it's been updated. It says yes. What? That's why you got the over the top intro from Rome. No, I was like, I was like, he's just saying something to be funny. No, but well. I... <laughs> Charlie, you still are from Canada, from right? No, I am I, from I'm, Canada. I'm, yeah. All right. Canada. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, that's all good. I mean, that's that's like a fun thing to. Uh, maybe I'll just leave it. Yeah. Let people... Look it up. Claim it. Yeah. Claim it. <laughs> well, this kind of well, this is more Carly based now. Sorry. Yeah. Um, but the question is, uh, I was going to say, like, with a problem like this, is so um, Americanized to say the least of school shootings and stuff like that. I'm sorry, I, I was going to relate that to Rome, but, eh. um, <laughs> um, but, um, But, yeah, when you have something so Americanized, was the concept of acting in shooter drills or um, duck procedures or active shooter scenarios, was that foreign to you? I, well, Jance, it was for you, too. This question is for you, too, but... Uh, yeah, it's... It, I mean, you know, as you mentioned, I'm from Canada. My husband's from Australia. We grew up in nations that do not have the prevalence of gun culture. We we don't have the Second Amendment. And that's, you know, a complex right and law in this country that you don't need a Canadian to espouse her beliefs and thoughts on that. That's that that's that's um, we don't need that. Um I do love butter on my bread, by the way, Sam. So thank you for that. <laughs> but uh, but uh, um, I was out of school before Columbine happened. Uh, we had had a school shoot, uh, a school shooting at um, Polytechnique in Montreal, Quebec, which I'm losing the year right now. I'm losing that year. Uh, and you know, of course, there were isolated incidences of gun violence that we we were aware of in Canada, but the, but the prevalence of it was certainly not so. And I was out of school by the time Columbine happened. So uh, I was not privy to things like drills um, and, and like threat assessments and things like that. There was sort of just, it was a lot more, um, it was, a, it was a lot, it was a lot less structured, I guess. And a lot, it, it was probably a lot, um, more uh clumsy really um so so yes that concept is relatively foreign to me but it's certainly something that my husband and I think about if we were to have children do would we want to raise children in this country you know and 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 I we have our thoughts on that for sure because it's just it's like the most horrifying thing as a parent I imagine is you send your child to school thinking they're safe and they're not and you know but that said too i just want to say one more thing and then i'll stop monologuing i promise but it trust me I, I do it all the time <laughs> but when james was talking about how you know he grew up in post columbine um reality in school and you had these drills and you had these protocols my first thought was were were there also mental health protocols in place? Like, did that also play a part? Like that to me is, and again, I just want to clarify, I don't think that, um, I don't think that if you have mental health issues, that means you're going to be violent. I do not think that that's I true. But I think that if you're violent, there is often mental health 
issues that have gone undetected or undiagnosed, I do think that the opposite is true. I don't think that just because you have mental health issues, there's a propensity to violence. That is not something that I would ever say. But I do think that if you're violent, there is probably going to be some correlation with a crisis going on with your brain health. And I think that that's just not addressed. And I think that that's just not um, cared for enough. I just wish there was more comprehensive care for people who are struggling. All right. Well, James, uh, this is a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I got your origin correct, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. Okay. Bring down camera, 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what I was getting at is um, there was some heavy scenes in this. And okay. was it any, was it, what was the atmosphere like on set? Because usually when you have these super heavy, you tell me, what was it like behind the camera? Because we saw what yeah. happened in front of the camera. Yeah, so um, so actually, back to your intro of me of the you know hijacking a friend's camera and burn you know, for me growing up making films, I started when I was like ten or eleven, and it was all about hanging out with my friends. And so, even when I'm approaching, you know, even when a film approaches something really heavy like this, a really sto heavy story, I think it's important for everybody to still be on set having just a nice time with each other, you know. And I was very fortunate to work with the collaborators I did, to work with the actors I did, to have a lot of uh, great actors and uh, like Carly and older actors like Bill Moses and, and to have a group of incredibly talented and mature young actors like Jance and Allison and Blaine be able to uh, have the maturity and balance to say, okay, we're shooting now. It's time to work. Here we go. We're going to turn it on. Everybody's going to give an amazing performance. The camera's cut. Okay. Let's take a breath. We're still on set. We get to have our, our regular selves, our personality and, and hang out with each other. I know like some of the younger actors would sometimes go get like uh, Allison was explaining once that they'd go out and get Denny's or something after a particularly hard day or watch a movie together or something. Uh, we had to extend our shoot a couple extra days. And, uh, you know, Carly and Alyssa was like, all right, we're going to take off to uh, Niagara Falls up in Canada for a day. And they had a spa day. And, and so, you know, I think, I think it was really nice that everybody kept our friendships and community on set. Um, but when it came time to, to act and, and turn the camera on, everybody was there and focused and um, just blessed to work with everyone that we did for it. Um, I think we, I think we all had really inherent respect for the material yeah. And more so respect for one another. So there was just that like very um, constant focus on making sure that we were doing justice to the, to everyone, but also to the material. Yeah, I think everybody knew the sensitivity of the material and to approach it with, with compassion. And, and as Carly said, with the respect. So, you know, still had fun though, I think. Okay. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, Jance, Carly was... A particular scene or moment that you guys acted in where that was the one where, like like James said, hey, I'm going to need a minute. Was, was it something? And please don't go too far into details, no spoilers, but, you know, was this anything particular that stuck out to you? Um, yeah, I mean, for me, like so many of my scenes were uh, like, they it was, it was like letting the tiger out of the cage, like immediately. So there were a lot of times when, you know, we would, the, the very first scene of the day, like <clears throat> Andy is freaking out, like, and so I, I would, I would, it would take a lot of energy to like, get me to be able to be in that state, like right when the camera is on. Um, Cause you know, in real life, things happen that build up, you know, like you're in a, you're in a fight, you're in a, an argument that builds up. And so the emotion is just kind of naturally flowing and bubbling up. But when you're on set, it's like, you're talking about like what you're going to eat for lunch. And then three minutes later, you have to be like screaming that you're going to like die or something, you know? So it was like, yeah, there were definitely times when I was like, nobody talked to me because I need to go listen to my sad song really quick <laughs> or something, you know? <laughs> um, and yeah, to go back to the, your other question, like the set was just perfectly set up to allow that. 
kind of um, reflection and space. I mean, there was definitely, you know, people saying, hey, like, we got to get this scene done, like, ASAP, so don't take too long. And there was a tight schedule for sure, but um, I always felt supported, and I always felt like I was given the space to do what I needed to do to get to where everyone needed me to get to get the scene right. Okay. Uh, Carly? Yeah. Um, on that, uh, on, on Jance's point about like, you know, of course, because it's an independent film, you know, you have to shoot everything a week ago in order to get it finished and in the can and done and moving forward and there's limited budget and everything else. But, but we also had one scene in particular that is like a really critical scene in the movie that is sort of um, a crescendo for uh, Angela and Andy's relationship that that we really struggled with on the day. Like when we were rehearsing it, we just couldn't really like figure out the the motivation exactly. And I and and I will take a lot of that on. I was having a lot of trouble getting myself and understanding that place and the motivation in the scene. And James was so wonderful and so gracious and so caring about the subject matter that he just kept re rewriting it. And he kept rewriting it until we got it right. We kept also reshooting it until we got it right, which I think happened twice or three times. But we ultimately, we, you know, we, we, the, the care and consideration that was put into that was so, um, beautiful and poignant because it was like it mattered that much it mattered that much that we had to we ha we had to nail it otherwise this moment between the two characters wouldn't have made sense and we wanted to strive for a reality as much as possible but to answer your question more succinctly about like the moment where it was like i need to take a breath there were there were a few of them in this one like this this film definitely and and i think um and again i i can't say too much about it but i think on a primal molecular level it's the it's toward the end which is like the climax of the film and sam you'll know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. but it's a critical moment at the climax where everything changes and that was sort of like on on a physical level that just sort of it takes it out of you because you connect into this like primal feeling of the feeling that you're feeling and it really is a weak in the knees moment so like that's where i have experience in uh, with post-traumatic stress disorder so like for me going tapping into that kind of trauma um was something that like for me on a on a kinetic physical level I needed to kind of go like just give me a second because I actually can't feel anything below my neck I know exactly what you're talking I know exactly about. what she's talking about too yeah I, I, I got that dude <laughs> now, hey, let's, since we're here let's get a little deeper let's let's just dig into it James uh you're up let's ask some deep questions for you too um you're touring with the film festival uh with this film just doing a festival circuit right now but some of your stops and just looking at the map here have been near places where school shootings have occurred or close to it. Yeah. How do you approach that? How do you approach this film or the audience or just, hey, do you uh, just text in and just with say, a hey, lot guys, of, uh, I know. Yeah, with a lot of fear and sweaty armpits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, no. Um, so like one in particular was the uh, River's Edge uh, film festival in Paducah, Kentucky. And they had had a school shooting back in 2018, not far outside of Paducah. And um, the festival brought us in, you know, and I think that speaks to speaks volumes to the festival uh, more than the film, because they're trying to bring in stories to address these things as well and open that conversation for uh, for us filmmakers to have with the audience to hopefully continue the conversation outside of uh, outside of the film. So it's, for me, like it actually felt easier when a festival brought us in near one of those um, events because it felt like the community is trying to talk about it. And um, I was lucky to help them not help them, but, you know, be there to talk about it with them. And um, 
you know, it was great. And we had a lot of really, really, really awesome Q and A's at some of the festivals and audience members who perhaps had family members near such a tragedy or close to it or friends or, you know, everybody's kind of six degrees separation from something happening. Right. And, and the closer you get to it, the closer somebody is to, to an event like that. And they just came in with, you know, sometimes it wasn't even questions they were asking in Q and A's, but just telling their story and telling or telling their niece's story or their friend's story or something. And so it was uh, a really like, you know, it was just a really beautiful experience to, to be there with them talking about these sort of things. Um, so that's great. Um, because sometimes, um, I want to, I'm going to preference this by saying that sometimes there are some people who don't like the mirror being pointed back at them. Mm. So that could have been a hurdle. I I'm mm. glad you have not experienced that because this film it can be a bit triggering. I'm I'm just I'm just yeah. gonna put it right there. It, it, it can be. Sure. And if you are sensitive to something like that, maybe it probably won't get the voice and that healing won't occur because they can't take it in right now. Mm. Okay, okay. Um well, one thing I and I'm glad the audience have. Um, but what was your initial? What what would you want the audience to take away from this film? Um, if it had to be one or two things. Yeah, I mean, for me, I had sorry to go over the two things, but I had like kind of three pillars That's always, right. which was um, uh, empathy, compassion, and communication. Right. So like mostly I want people to sort of walk away seeing this, you know, and again, this is not supposed to generalize uh, these sort of tragic events and not supposed to generalize mental health. And and like Carly had mentioned before, we're not trying to say somebody who does violent thing, you know, somebody who has mental health issues necessarily does violent things and and such. But, you know, to be there to see a story like this unfold and know that there is a hurricane of factors that go into a tragedy like this. And for us to sort of approach these these moments with a little bit more uh, compassion and empathy, and then to continue the communication for those who perhaps are seeing somebody going through a mental health crisis to either offer help or try to help, you know, the the people around them in some way, and to know if you are going through something to to talk about it. So okay. that was a little bit more than two. But hey, I, yeah, I definitely I I agree. I mean, I think that like if people see this film and they consider a little harder, feel a little deeper and check in a little more, then we have done it justice. We've done, Mm -hmm. we've done, you know, we've, we've done ourselves justice in trying to create more dialogue and, and communication surrounding issues that are very much plaguing this country specifically today okay well we're getting up against it i know we are um i got one more question and i'm just gonna open it up uh we i know you're doing the festivals right now and there are some screenings that's happening but will there be a wide release of this film um in the future do you know or so the film uh film actually comes out on december 19th on uh, all digital platforms um so, you know, your Apple, it's available for pre-order right now on Apple TV, um, but you'll also be able to find it on Amazon and Vudu and every everywhere you can go buy a movie digitally these days, it'll be out there December 19th. Okay. And I'm opening this up. I want to thank you for so much for just giving us a little bit of your time, all three of you, this camera, this camera, this camera, whoever wants to go first, whatever new projects you got. Actually, you know what? I don't break that. Jance, I'm sorry, man. Uh, we got to use it, bro, Italy. Where are you actually from? <laughs> I'm from uh, Los Angeles. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's keep that Rome thing going, man. You may want to keep that. Let yeah, us it's more you, interesting, man. right? Yeah. I'll I just feel like if I do that, then someone's going to be like, oh, you, so you speak Italian. <laughs> yes. You, you know, you got to just kind of lean into the skid at this point. Um. <laughs> But you get first dibs because we totally messed out with them. So, um, any 
what's next for you? This camera, this camera. Let them know your IG, whatever you want to plug is all you. Okay. Well, I just, you know, the strike just ended. So <clears throat> really haven't been doing much on the acting front in the past few months besides, you know, reading scripts and watching a lot of movies. Um, but now that it's over, I'm, you know, back in the groove of uh, reading scripts for projects I'm actually going to be auditioning for. And so that's that's the case with that. Um, I am an artist and a painter. So if you guys want to check out my work, you can follow my Instagram and look at my website, jance.tv. That's what I'll link you to is that. Um, yeah, okay. that's me. Thank you. And 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 one last thing. I I swear I don't stop picking on you, Jazz. I, I I am. Because you shook my confidence so much with the uh Rome Italy thing. I did not ask you one question. I have written right here. <laughs> See it. Yeah. Yeah. Go for, for it. Some I of the art in the movie your own original work when you walk through the bedroom or you see like the pad was some of that your original work um there were a couple of paintings okay. that i made while we were on Especially, set right right <laughs> that were in the background um but most of them were focusing on um the the work done by our comic book artist uh, James Fenner was the name of the illustrator that we brought on to do like Andy's, a lot of Andy's artwork. And we only did that because we needed to be prepared coming on set and have that and um, not realizing how great of an artist Jance was. And um, but James Fenner made a lot of the sort of graphic novel stuff. Um, and then also uh, we had a couple of other artists that, you know, we got to use their work in the background. So. That's awesome. I, I, I felt I, you shook me. I was afraid to ask that question because I'm like, oh man, I don't want to go over two. So it's, um, it's a good question. And it's an instinctive one as well, learning that Jance was an artist. That's a really, it's a very thoughtful question. Yeah. Well, Carly, you're next. What new projects you got coming up? Sam, I got nothing. Let's work. Wow. Let's do this. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I um I've I'll I'll make a little appearance on season two of Pretty Little Liars, um, which will be coming out eventually. They're just about to wrap up the season. So I've got a couple episodes on that. Um, and otherwise, yeah, doing a lot of life, to be honest. There's a lot of life stuff going on. So I'm happy to be working should it come up. But if it doesn't, then life's got me as well. OK, that's always good. And James, um, any new projects? What's going on? We know the uh... That's a yeah, I got a lot of a uh, lot of pots and pans on the stove, you know, trying to trying to cook something up. But uh, hopefully, shooting a uh, horror comedy script I've been working on for for a bit. Uh, next next spring summer, we're trying. You know, we'll see. And then uh, a couple other projects. I can't, you know, stuff. It's nothing coming out soon. But uh, but you can also follow me at James Kamali, just my full name, uh, on Instagram, and uh, you know, check in on my on my updates. Okay, and I'll make sure I put all your uh, socials in the bio of this episode of the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I thank you guys so much. Um, you guys are welcome back anytime, except you, James. Uh, we got to talk to you. Um, <laughs> put away. No, there's a reason. There's a reason. I'm not just saying no. He, it okay. just occurred to me he's a Cowboys fan, so I got to talk to you like yeah. after February. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you noticed a lot of Lions gear. Happening. I see it. I see it. I see it. It's too yeah. close, man. It's too close. So like, <laughs> we're good. March first on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll check back in. I'll check back in after All February right, March, 11th. You know, the healing yeah. would have taken place after that. Then, then, then you could come sure. back. But yeah, well, I call the I call the Cowboys the Jets of the playoffs. They get to the playoffs and then just fizzle out. So James, you're talking to a Lions fan. We just yeah, that's got you. True. We like. I we love all your hats got back there. Say, so, yeah, well, oh, thanks so much. Your hat wall. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Hat door. <laughs> Uh, but thank oh. you guys so much. You're welcome back anytime. I wish you guys much success. And um, I know we're up against it. So thank you so much. And thanks for being on the podcast, guys. Thanks, thank Sam. you, Sam. Your energy was awesome, nice man. Thank you. All right. Nice Have a good one. Yeah.